<laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm good. How are you? What's going on? Yeah. Omar. Like Omar. Yeah, you can, Omar. Me, you can call me Omar. Yeah, so yeah. my parents would call you? Yeah. Would they like super roll their R's like Omar when you were mad? They'd, be, they'd say my full name. What's your full name? Omar Apolonio Velasco. <laughs> You're like, shit, I'm in trouble. I'm like, fuck, yeah. what I do, fuck. Well, welcome everyone to this very awesome live stream right here on Dash Radio. I'm Phoebe Montilla, host of Truth and Tunes and Punch Life Radio. And of course, I'm here with the amazing Thank you, thank you. No, I'm excited. So? No. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's really nice to say. It's a sweet thing to say. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah but um, yeah. I mean, how would I describe myself? Is that what you said? No, like instead of exciting, what would you? No, I love yeah. excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, hype me up, gas me up, because you know what? They've been sleeping on me for too long. I'm just playing. <laughs> Mm. Week. Jimmy yeah. Fallon, yeah. Dash Radio. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, Dash Radio was like Dash good. Radio, Fuck Fallon. with me. <laughs> Who are we for you? Released the song. Well, probably like a, a week and a half now, but right. yeah, it's been great. It's been a great week. I've just been rehearsing all week, getting ready for Lollapalooza and stuff. Lollapalooza is kind of like an important festival, I'd say. Yeah, I played it like two years ago. I know you yeah, that was crazy because I had like kind of an early set, so I was like, fuck, like my set's gonna be at like one. But it was lit as fuck, and this time I'm playing at night, like 9 30. I was gonna say, I have a feeling that your stage has changed from when you first played at Lollapalooza two years ago. Oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. I had to do it up, I had to switch it up. Because they, they had a whole plan for me, like stage, and I was like, no, 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 trash it, take it away, take it away. Cause I had this whole other idea, but you'll 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 see it when we'll it comes. See, yeah. We'll see. I mean, I won't be. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chicago, but I'm sure you'll. you'll I don't want to like give it away. Yeah. Does it have any resemblance to the amazing performance that you did at Jimmy Fallon or not? Oh no no no! no. It's different. It's different. Okay. I can't do the same shit. Yes, no. no. <laughs> yeah, I hear you're you're like a perfectionist. Am I? That, I don't know. I heard that. Hmm. I'm gonna say I heard that from one of your team members. I didn't come. Oh my that. god. <laughs> I know what you're doing. <laughs> no. oh, I am. Okay, then I am. Then I am. I am. But that's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, honestly, because I have to. You have to in this. It's like, you know, people really don't realize when you make music, it's like forever. When you put stuff out, it's forever. It's not like, oh, no, just do it for now. Like, blah, blah, blah. Because it's like, yo, nah, if I'm going to do it, I got to be 100%. Like, boom, boom, boom. Um, no, I haven't always been like that. I used to say fuck it and just do whatever and like sound terrible. One time I did a show, like my voice was so fucked up. I was overseas. I got the flu and I was just like, people were like flying in. It was a really small so show. So I was like, I think I was in somewhere in, in the UK, but, um, I just talked the whole show. I didn't sing. You didn't sing at all. I was like talking the lyrics, <laughs> like how I am now. I was like, no, but I was the, the, everyone was playing, but I couldn't sing. I was just like, fuck it. But I'm like, I would never do that again. Mm -hmm. I would just be like, go home. I have to say that one of the things that I love about you is that you play with your voice. You experience, like you experiment with your voice. Uh -huh. Is that something that you do on your own? Or are you going to like, you know, do you have a vocal coach? Or do you stand in front of the mirror and just kind of like see where your voice takes you? Yeah, I kind of, it's mostly in the studio. It's kind of like. It's kind of like when I'm in the booth, like I'll just, or just like at home, like recording or whatever, wherever I'm at recording, I'll just try shit. And if it, even if it's weird, like I don't, I don't like think of it as weird because I'm like, it's my job. So I'll just be making weird noises or weird tones or whatever, just like to, to see if it sounds good or not. Right. Well, you've come a long way. You started out in Indiana, your church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like fame and people recognizing you and recognizing your music has come kind of fast. Does it feel like that? 
Um, yeah, I mean, like, I've, I've been touring for, like, a couple of years, but I, in the beginning, it felt really fast. It just kind of, like, happened. It was, like, we do a show, and then, like, there's more people every time, and it was just like that. But, yeah, it was, I guess it was, it was, like, kind of, like, I don't know, it's really exciting. It's really exciting. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, You Got Me was the song that kind of put you on the map. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking about this the other day because yeah. I was I found like the the session because I lost my hard drive that had you got me on it. And, yeah, but I found it. Oh, and uh, <laughs> no, I found it. And I looked at the session and I was like, wow, like I saw the session or like, you know, where I how I placed everything, how I recorded everything. And I was like, damn, that was such a different time. I really didn't know what I was doing. I was just kind of like pressing record and like playing and singing and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I remember just like in, be in between when I was making You Got Me, my friend was like, yo, we got to move all this shit from outside. So uh, in, the, in, in between the making You Got Me, I like went outside and like had to haul like a million bags of like trash and like put them in the, in the back of a truck and I was like sweating. It was like 100 degrees. And then I went back and finished the song. <laughs> was this ever your dream to become this big? Um, I don't know. I, honestly, I, I'd just be making shit like, yeah. and then it just kind of like, I don't really, I think now I have more of an understanding of like what it takes to, you know, to, to be in this like lifestyle or like things that in general to like kind of go to the next place that you want to go. So I'm aware of that. But like back then I was just, doing your thing. yeah, I was just chilling. I was in that bitch, like doing shows every day. Like it was cool. I mean, not much has changed. Just the shows are bigger and better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you remember that, that time? No, you know what? My yeah. my dad literally told me he's like, "You sound terrible." <laughs> he told he's me like, that. You suck. He's like, "You told me you suck," and I was like, "But the only reason is because you know, like, I'm Mexican, so he would pay attention to Mexican like singers who had really strong vibratos, right. like he, that shit." And he loved that. And I didn't have that naturally, so I had to learn how to do it. But once I learned how to do it, he was like, oh, you're fire. So, like, he didn't say that, but, now? yeah, they both are. My, my parents are supportive, yeah. You're like, yeah, that I have millions of listeners on Spotify. Who sucks now? <laughs> I don't think he knows what Spotify is. He's like, what's Spotify? <laughs> Has, have they seen you live already? Like, a bunch of times? Um, they've seen me probably, like, four times live. But they're gonna they're gonna see me a lot more. It's just cause I I really don't play back home like that much. Okay. Yeah. Well, we gotta bring in, bring them to LA or Chicago, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's time for one of the questions from your your fan. Okay, her name is Kyla Dio Robertson, and she's from Virginia Beach. And I have to say, she did it. She posted a really beautiful cover of Trouble. Oh. No. <laughs> and the answer is nope. No, it hasn't. Um, yeah, no. I think that, I mean, I, I, before the pandemic, I made all my music pretty much in like a home setting, um, whether it was somebody else's house or mine. And then when the pandemic started, I just, had, I just did that again. But now I don't really make music at home anymore. I, did, I go to the studio. Just because, like, I need to separate the house from work. Right, right. But yeah. How has that helped your... your that, that's, that's been different. Right. But that came with, like, me, like, like being able to afford it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you just, like, go. I can, like, go to the studio now. But um, that is nice. Because mm -hmm. I was just at home, like, and then I'd go and, like, watch TV for a little bit and then come back and then make more music. Yeah, now when you're in the studio, yeah, and just working. There work. Yeah, and there's no windows, so it's nice. Like, you don't know what time it is. Right. This time passes by. Yeah, you just like, kind of let it do its thing. 
I love that you're exploring with some Spanish songs too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, do you feel like I feel like my voice changes? I don't sing, but when I talk, my, yeah. my voice changes from Spanish to English. Did you feel that, like, when you sing or even write in Spanish versus English, does it change your creative process in any way? That yeah, it does. It's like I was thinking about this today too, because <laughs> I was listening to some corridos and I was like. Right? Oh, I would. I wouldn't do my normal like process, like thinking process, as a like with melodies and like placement and cadence and all that over these types of songs. You know what I mean? And I could, but it just wouldn't. It would. It, it just. It doesn't feel right to me. But, but I mean, also like when I, when I like like rap in Spanish or when I rap in English, it sounds cooler in Spanish for oh, sure. It does. Yeah. Why do you think? I mean, not I to say that Spanish is a really cool <laughs> language. I think it's just like, it's kind of like a little more angry and sexy kind of mm. tone. Even though I could do that in English, but it's like, I don't know, I guess like the, the way that I speak Spanish, the way that I was like taught Spanish right. was like, it's, it's very like non, it's not like totally correct. It's like slangy. Right. So it, that's why I like it. Even though I, that's how I speak in English too, but right. um, I don't know. I like it. Just hits a little different. <laughs> I like it. But I, I, in English, I, it's just it's just different. It's not that it one's better. It's just different. Right. Yeah. And different is good. And it's, yeah. And it's cool that you are exploring with that. You know, where do you think your Latin roots show up during your creative process? Definitely when I'm writing like torch songs, <laughs> which is like romantic. Because my parents would only play like Romanticas and stuff like that, like Pedro Infantes, Vicente Fernandez, like right. all that. So that's where all like the exaggeration and like, you know, love and like what it does to you, how it makes you feel. And like, it's just like, oh, uh, like, you know, just like that. I was, I just took that in at a young age. Um, and I didn't realize until I got older, I was like, wow, I, I'm actually really influenced by the music that my parents played me when I was yeah. a kid. So, yeah. <laughs> you made me such a fan of that guy, Ian. Shout out to you. I'm a I love Ian. I was with my homie earlier. We was chilling. We was at rehearsal. What the fuck is he talking about? But uh, yeah, he's the best. I used to go to his. I used to go to his dance classes when I was like 16. Really? Yeah. He was like the. He was like my idol. He was the and best. Obviously, he had no idea who you were. Yeah, no clue. Okay. I remember. I remember my outfit. That's how much of a fan I was. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was wearing this like yo Loyola like uh, gray tee and then like sweatpants and then these like really bad like Fila shoes I had. And probably like a, like a baseball cap or something? No, my hair was just out and I also had the flu. I was like 16. <laughs> I was so, I was, but I, knew, I wanted to go so bad. I love the fact that you, you know it's all kind of like come full circle and now. Yeah, it's funny. Your yeah, he's the best. <laughs> and that has a lot to do with how you move your body, with mm. your dancing skills. And just, do you feel like the meaning of the songs change when you move your body a certain way? I feel like what happens when I'm performing live is I kind of, I kind of let the songs resurface how they made me feel when I wrote them. So the emotions come out yeah. and like everything else kind of surfaces. So I kind of just am like a a vessel for, it's kind of like a time capsule kind of thing. So, and sometimes I get sad. I'm like, damn, why was I so sad yeah. when I made this? But like, I don't know, but, and sometimes it's just like, you feel the beat, you feel the music, you just move. I mean, I've been dancing since I was a little kid, so I just like moving. And you feel comfortable dancing, which is awesome, especially for a Latino man. <laughs> You know, it's like, it's true. Why, well, Latino men are comfortable dancing? Some of them aren't, I feel like. Yeah, no, some of them are. I, I Actually, used to see, like, I'll take that back. I'll give credit to my Latinos. Actually, they feel more comfortable than Ameri like than yeah, the Gringos do. They do. I mean, yeah, I mean, it depends. I mean, because like my whole family is, except for like one brother, who's like, but he still tries. <laughs> he like jumps in there like, 
Like, you know? You should get him, like, t tell Ian to give him some private lessons. No, he doesn't need... Okay, that would be nice, too, because yeah. he, he actually likes Ian. Ian. Ian likes him, so... I'm I called. want some private lessons with Ian, I like too. Ian, bro. Oh. No, 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 I don't mean... <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean oh. like that. <laughs> I just feel like I truly want... That I totally set that up. Oh, my. <laughs> Such a late, that was such a good late reaction too. You're like, oh whoa! I meant more like playing, I really want playing, to perfect my dancing <laughs> skills. Is what I meant to say. So anyway, oh my god, now I'm the one blushing right here. <laughs> okay, moving on. Let's talk about your fans. <laughs> What about them? They're great. They're the best. Dude, they're the best. Yeah, I gotta put the spotlight back on you because now I'm like blushing. And it's like, <laughs> no, 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 I was joking. I hope it. Ian's watching this. <laughs> Hi, what's up, Ian? <laughs> but um, your fans are the freaking best. Thank you. Wow, no, they're they're great. I mean, ever since the first couple shows, I kind of like it felt like, you know, I I don't. Since they like my music, I feel like they they understand a really like strong part of me, which is like really important. I feel like for me and when people are like listening to music, I guess. So I kind of it's it's a really sweet like wholesome feeling when like you know people come up to me and they know my music and they like you know are genuinely like it and like tell me about it and you know we talk about it and, and stuff like that. So it's just crazy, like that. It's like crazy groups of it, you know, yeah. like shows and stuff, and just like feeling that energy from them, and then me being able to, like, you know, give it back. So, and I think in a very, very beautiful way too, because one of one of the elements about your music and your songwriting that I really admire is that you're super vulnerable. What are you laughing about? <laughs> are you still thinking about Ian? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have such a bad laughing problem. <laughs> I laugh so much. <laughs> That's not a problem. <laughs> that's that's good. That's that a, good a good thing. thing. To, yeah, that's a good thing. thing to have. I laugh too much. <laughs> oh my god. But no, you can never laugh too much. That's a good thing. Yeah. Keep laughing as much as you can for sure. Especially <laughs> after we've had a little bit of herradura tequila. Which, by the way, happy national salud. Salud. tequila day, right? See, happy Where? national tequila day. Thanks to herradura for actually letting us have this conversation with Omar here on Fun for Life Radio on Dash. Okay, so Omar. One of the, as I was saying, one of the things that I really admire about your work is that you're not afraid of being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I feel like artists like Setangana, who you've collaborated with, mm -hmm. Ed Maverick from Mexico is doing that as well, which mm -hmm. is like, you know, opening up your heart and just being like super vulnerable. Is there, is that challenging? Is that like, is that tough? You know, I've, I can only remember one time that it was tough. Okay. Yeah, only one time. I mean, I guess, okay, I guess more than once. Because if you, if you ask me to perform my songs in front of, like, my intimate, like, friend group, you know, like, like my people that I talk to, I feel a little weird because I'm like, wow, I'm like, it's, mm, I don't know. Because they know me and they know everything. Right. So, like, they're like, oh, that's who you're talking about? <laughs> You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm a little embarrassed when I show them, but then they honestly, like, honestly, my friends, when they, when they hear my music, they're like, damn, like, you spilling, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. they're like, I know what you're talking about, but it's, that's the only reason why, because they know what's up. But, like, in terms of everyone else, it, I don't really feel that way. But there was this one song I made. Uh, I named my last project after it. Um, well, two projects ago, it's called Friends. Mm -hmm. There's a song called Friends on there. Yep. That, that's the only time I remember feeling like that. But yeah, that was it. I'm sure it was super cathartic, right? Yeah, it was definitely like, I put it out and I was like, it didn't feel good. It didn't, so do you still, when you sing it? No, it's the it, past, girl. We, out, we off that, we moved on. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter closed, <laughs> moving on. All right, we have, a, we have a question here. Let me see if I can read this. Okay, girl. Okay, it says, what was it like having Albert Hammond Jr in the track, Useless. <laughs> and I don't know who wrote this. Um, I don't know who sent this, but thank you. <laughs> Wh whatever fan, Omar fan wrote this, thank you. So, Albert Hammond Jr., he's, he's in the Strokes. He's the guitar player. He's, he's amazing. Um, 
I someone he reached out to like my manager or somebody that knew my manager or something and said I really want to work with Omar and I was like damn that's nuts and I kind of had the chords for useless done and he and we hopped on the phone and then like we talked for a sec and then I sent him the song afterwards and he's like I love this I love this like we, I gotta like let's do something with it I was like okay so he came over and my dad was in town because he was helping me move Aww. so my dad had like no clue who he was oh, and Roberto. Shout out to <laughs> he had no clue who he was. It, it was just funny because they talked for like 45 minutes and then my dad made him like tilapia soup. And then like we just chilled. And it was a good time. It was a great time. But yeah, he's, that song is awesome. And, um, that's really my favorite song. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's, true. that's sweet. But I, I love um, your play on sarcasm. I don't know if this is on purpose, but I mean, you start your <laughs> album with I'm Amazing. <laughs> And then towards the end, it's useless. like, useless. Because <laughs> I be feeling like that. I be yeah. feeling like, yeah. I feel very, like, strongly in moments. So, like, I'll feel amazing, and then I'll, like, feel useless. Yeah. And it's just, like, that's just how it is. And, then, like, I get shit done when I'm in both stages, though. <laughs> so that's what's good. But it's just like a weird, I don't know, it's just emotions, just being human, I guess. Just well, like, and don't you think like the industry kind of like hypers that, like like intensifies that feeling? Yeah, 100%. Yes, 100%. Because otherwise that'd just be like, you know, chilling at the crib, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you feel more amazing than useless <laughs> most of the time. No, yeah, I do feel amazing. I feel amazing right now. It's a beautiful day. Actually, Yay! the weather is great. It's like not too hot. It's like... So I walked outside and I was nice. like, you know what? We're going to do great today. Yes, we are. We are going to do great <laughs> today. And I hope that nobody leaves because soon you'll be able to watch Omar perform one of his songs. So stick around. Um, Omar, I don't think I have any more questions. Or they should be bringing more questions in. So if my team has any questions from the live stream, we would love to have them. Is the live uh, stream happening? Is, yeah, it's right here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's like live. Okay, I see. <laughs> yeah, usually live streams are live, Omar. <laughs> That's usually how it That's works. That's actually terrifying. You shouldn't have told me. Now I'm going to be all quiet. No, we're about to end anyway, so you've done so good. No, I'm, I'm glad playing. I told you towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's live, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, well, I, I do hope that you continue exploring in Espanol. I did see that you tweeted about your corrido. Oh, possibly yeah. Possibly doing a corrido. Yeah, I want to do a corrido EP. Because like, I mean, your fans were like, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I just like, I love music, so it just feels right. But like, like I said, I be having moments where I feel really strongly about things, so I tweet them. But then I, I might be lying. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll be lying like shit on the TL. Like, <laughs> don't. In other words, don't believe everything Omar posts. <laughs> I'm like your song next week. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, wait. Okay, so when are when can we expect a new um, a new album to drop? Um, I mean, we nah. dropped "Go Away" this week. I'm gonna drop singles definitely the rest of the year. We'll see, cause you know I be I don't be knowing. You I, don't know. Because it's like when it's done, when I feel like it's done, then it's like. And I'm like, okay, bet let's drop it. I never. I, I'm always so curious when artists are like. Okay, this is done. How do you get to that point? How do you get to the point where you're like, yep, I've worked on this song for sometimes three hours, sometimes uh, three years, and it's done. I feel like you have kind of like a premeditated vision, like when you start the song, like everything, all the components and elements that you want, and I guess like everything that like, what your brain is telling you that you need, like, you know, like the, I guess the feeling mm -hmm, more so mm -hmm. of anything. Once I feel that feeling, which is the, like, it just feels kind of effortless, then that's when I know it's done. But, like, I mean, I've... I think I read that once you, I don't know if it mentioned the song, but you dropped a song, and now you hear it, and you're like, it wasn't ready to be dropped. Yeah, that's happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's happened, but then I've actually, I've actually, like, kind of let it go, and I'm like, you know what, it's actually perfect. <laughs> it's perfect because it's out there and I'm sure people enjoy it anyway. Perfect is subjective, but... True. So is success. How do you define success? <laughs> I think success... 
I feel like success, it, you, you are like being lazy if you say you're successful. Mm. I don't know. Because it's like, why, do you want, what do you want to do now? Stop? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess there's a million little successful things that you want to do every day. Like, even if it's like, you know, like what? Going to the gym that day or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, right, whatever. Right. Little, yeah, just little like, goals. Yeah, little goals. Because I feel like if I stop having goals, I'm going to be bored as fuck. Like, I'm going to just be like, oh, shit. But I guess successful, I know what you mean. Like, the actual, like, successful as in, like, people, like, you know, I'm able to tour and, like, do things like that. How does that feel? That feels amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like I said, I, I just like don't ever want to like, you know, get lazy. I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, I totally know what you're saying. Yeah, right? For sure. I'm t definitely <laughs> the, the, I can totally re relate to what you're saying. Yeah, I just want to make like, better albums, like, you know, better music, better videos, better. I mean, it just be like that. Yeah. Just kind of. Maybe so it's. Besides, obviously, being here at the Dash Studios, being interviewed by me, what's the most successful thing you've ever done in your career? <laughs> I love that. I love the confidence. That's amazing. I love her. I'm obsessed with her. Okay, girl. <laughs> um, what's the most successful thing I've ever done? Mm. And like you said, it's relative. You know, everybody has their own yeah, definition is. of success. I think. I think honestly. Just the fact that I can like take care of my parents, yeah. um, is that feels good. I feel like that's feels like success to me, especially like you know knowing like how we grew up and you know knowing they're from Mexico and came to the United States and like you know had children and you know are getting grandchildren now from my brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like that's success to me. It's just like yeah, family, I guess. For real, yeah. yeah. And what about um, you know we've, 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 we're talking about how ambition, how ambitious you are. Like, what's your biggest? And I know this will change on a weekly basis, probably. But like, what's your biggest ambition, goal, dream right now? Right now, honestly, it's always music. Like, it's making the best music I possibly can for the exact moment that I'm in right now. If I didn't try my hardest, then I know that it's just not. It's just like why why wouldn't I try my hardest, you know? Right. I don't know. Does that sound weird? No, that I mean th that's why we all listen to I'm just so passionate about it. Like, I, 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 I feel like, the passion. <laughs> I feel no. the passion. No. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Rachel from YouTube, I guess. That's what Y E T. That would be YouTube. Hey right? Rachel from YouTube. What's up? Can you talk more about the creative direction you're taking on this album? Um, <laughs> honestly, I'm really working on that right now. <laughs> Rachel, any advice? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually like literally like in a group chat <laughs> right now about it. It's always like that to me is always the hardest part because the music is like really fun. But yeah, that's always the hardest part because you want it. To, you want to like be at the same level with your creative like direction with the music yeah and my last album cover was so fire that it i'm like fuck so i'm like yo we gotta good. top it, baby. it was so good. i was that like we gotta top that shit so we have to top it we're not dropping the album until we top it i swear to god and you'll know yeah you'll know right you'll know because when i saw it you know it's funny i saw it i was like maybe because apolonia was kind of like a project yeah and it's like nine songs. It's kind of short. Not like downplaying it as a project as a whole because I love it. But I was like, fuck, we should say this <laughs> for this album. Right. But then we're like, nah, we got to come hard. Why wouldn't we go hard? So, I mean. Plus, that challenges you. Talking yeah. about success. Those are the type of decisions that's that you have I'm to saying. make. Yeah. And it is. And I'm working with all the great people. Aiden Cullen. Shout out Aiden Cullen. That's my boy. He shot the last cover. He does all my creative shit. He's the best. Um, but we're about to, you know, it's about to be crazier. Cool. Yeah. Omar, I can't wait for what's next for you. But wait, wait, before we close this out, so it's National Tequila Day, and we're here thanks to Herradura Tequila. Do you, like, are you a good bartender at all? Okay, you know what? I'm not, <laughs> but I would love to. If I wasn't doing music, I'd probably be in that space. Really? Yeah, probably. 
You'd be a, a, a bartender, you think? Yeah, or probably. A, what are they called? Mixologists. Mixologists. Period. My friend is a mixologist, and he's crazy. Well, he should give you some good tequila. Herradura. I've seen him do it. He shake the shit like. It's like good armor. It's like. Yeah, and it's like super cold, and then they got the little clasp over the top. And they and hit they, it. And then pour it out like that. Mm -hmm. All sexy. So you're more of a, like a tequila on the rocks kind of guy. Um, Simple, just pour it. Nothing complicated. No shaking. I like Moscow mules. Is that complicated? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. But, but ginger I'm beer, not, orange I'm, bitters, and then I'm like. I'm not a mixologist. Yeah, me either. Yeah, so I don't know. But Omar, thank you so much for your time, dude. You're, thank you're you for truly amazing, me. and I know that you know that you're amazing. Although sometimes <laughs> you think you're 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 useless, but you're not. <laughs> um, I love you. Everyone that's watching you right now loves you. I have never seen you live. Really? I have never seen you live, dude. I know. Oh. So I'm really excited because in just a couple of minutes, so hang out, guys. The live stream is not over, but we do need a break while he, you know, takes a little maybe shot and just goes on stage and relaxes. Um, so give us a couple of, time, uh, of minutes and he'll be on stage performing. It's going to be my first time, so I'm super excited. I've seen all these videos of you performing live, and like I said, I'm like, oh, my God, this guy knows how to dance so good. And then I see you on saw you on Jimmy Fallon, I'm like, oh my God, you're such a good performer. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and you're really putting the, like, you know, Latinos in the mainstream. And wow, in thank such you so much. Great way. It's your, seriously, you're, you're, you represent us in a very unique, oh, creative thank, way. That's so sweet to and say. I'm not say. Thank you. <laughs> but I'm not saying it because you're here. I'm saying it because it's true. Yeah. And keep exploring, keep keeping us on our toes because mm. we never know what you're going to sound like, what your look is going to be like. And, <laughs> and that's cool. Yeah, you know, that's what being so creative much. is about. Well, I'm going to keep doing that then. I'll keep <laughs> making music. Honestly, I love it. It's great. Well, it's what you were born to do. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And thank you guys for tuning into this live stream. I'm Pili, and this was for Fun for Life Radio. Thank you again, Herradura Tequila. Don't go anywhere in just minutes. You'll be able to see this guy. Mr. Omar Apollo on stage performing, so stay tuned. Salud.
And we're back here, the live stream. We're in the heart of Hollywood, Dash Radio. I'm Philly Montilla for Fun for Life Radio. Thank you, Herradura Tequila. We're celebrating National Tequila Day today. So grab a drink, but obviously drink responsibly. I'm super excited because I get to introduce an amazing talent who I just totally connected with, and I feel like we're going to be friends forever because he just told me that his dad's nickname is Pili. So there's obviously a good connection there. And I'm going to take dancing lessons with him and someone else. <laughs> anyway, with you guys, please enjoy amazing talent, Omar Apollo. Oh, hello. I know there's a dog here, but I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you.
Again, live TV people, that's how it is. Thanks for being such a great audience though. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Grace Weber in the house. <laughs> Grammy award winning singer, songwriter in the house. Shout out to, are you, are you um, charging for autographs tonight? No, okay, take advantage of that. Oh, you guys know each other. <laughs> By the way, the winners um, will get a chance to take a picture with Omar by the Herradura sign. So once we're done, which will be in a couple of minutes, if you guys can gravitate towards the horseshoe, which by the way, Herradura means horseshoe in case you guys didn't know that. So next time you're at a bar and you want to ask from tequila, you go the one with the horseshoe, all right? And you'll take a picture with Omar, cool? You're welcome. Try to keep your mask on when you're Close to Omar, please. It's the only thing that we require. <laughs>